Hi guys, it's Kristen of Kristen's Art Cart, and I'm here to draw with you a flamingo. I don't know about you, but I could use a trip to the beach. Until we can do that, we can create our own beach scene. There are three parts to our scene. First, our subject, the flamingo, then the setting, the beach, the water line, the sand line, the shrubs. I'm going to show you a really cool, easy way to draw a palm tree. And then our last part is the beautiful details that help make our drawing complete. The lines in the palms, the lines on the palm tree, lines in the shrubs and dots in the sand that will make our picture complete. If you would like to do this flamingo beach scene with me, you do not need much. I did this on copy paper. I went over my pencil lines with a black marker and I colored it with regular old crayons. I did this one other time on paint paper and I painted her and I love that result too. So if you wanted to do that, you could use paint paper, uh, tempera paint or school paint or watercolors. Either way, you can choose however you want to color it and I will teach you to draw it, okay? Now, when I draw, we're going to do my guided drawing technique called I draw, you draw which basically means I draw step one, you draw step one, I draw step two, you draw step two, and so on. And we just follow along together until we have the picture created. I am going to draw with a Sharpie marker today so that you can see what I'm doing despite the glare. You might not be able to see if I did it with pencil right now, but you are going to draw with pencil and eraser, okay? And you're going to draw it light until you draw it right. You're going to draw with a very light pencil line so that you can erase if you need to and you won't have to fight with a big dark pencil line. I'm going to draw with a Sharpie. Okay, are you ready? Let's tilt this a teeny bit so you will be able to see me. Step one, we're going to begin with our flamingo, as I said, and step one, it's almost like a two, like, a, like not the big loop-de-loop -loop two, but like the straight kind of two. That's how we're gonna go, sort of in the middle of the paper. Sort of like that, like a big two. Okay, that's step one. Step two, you're gonna curl that in like that. Then you're gonna go down her skinny neck. Now they don't have big, big bodies like ostriches, okay? So don't get too carried away on this part. It's almost like you're gonna make a smile, you're gonna curve, and you can make a little point for her little tufted tail feathers, okay? Now we're gonna give her a pretty little eye and some eyelashes. Flamingos are so pretty. And then they have kind of like a hooked, a, cur a curved, beak. It's going to go like that and like that. And then we're going to give it a line so we know her beak is closed. And then we're going to go dash, dash, because the tip of their beak is black. Now we're going to give her a lovely fluffy feathered wing. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to make almost like parentheses, curved line, curved line and then close the bottom of the curved lines. Then you're gonna go loop, 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 loop. A row of loop-de-loops and another row of loop-de-loops. Loop, 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 loop. And there you have a pretty little curved wing. Now, of course, they have those long skinny legs. So we're gonna draw one long skinny line and right next to it, another long skinny line. Then they have that thing with their legs where they like bend the wrong way, which is so kooky. So we're gonna go backward a little, backward a little, forward a little, forward a little, but it's behind the other leg, so you gotta stop when you get to the other leg. Okay, now it's gonna come out from behind the other leg we're going to give this leg a foot. 
And this is a cool trick. You'll know how to make webbed feet because they have sort of like, uh, like webbed feet. So if you draw a frog or anything else that has a webbed foot, here's a little trick. Go one, two, three. And now in between those, you're just going to go loop, loop. Neato, right? Now this foot is in the water. So we're just going to put a line like this. And then we're going to go like this. Ring around it. Ring around it. So it looks like the water is pulled around the bottom of her foot. Okay. Now we're going to do the water line. So as straight as you can, you go across, stop when you get to her, because she's in front, right? There's the water line. Little bit of beach, another line, another line. And now, are you ready? We're gonna do a, a super cool trick and you'll know how to draw a palm, a palm tree. It's an easy way to learn how to do a palm tree, okay? So, they're pretty tall. We're gonna have a long, very skinny triangle. So start up here. We have to have room for the palms, so don't go too far up. And then down. It gets slightly wider as it gets to the bottom, right? It's a very, very tall, very, very skinny triangle. Now at the top, we're going to put two palms on each side. You could, depending on what you were doing, you could put a lot more. Often they have a lot more palms, but for our purposes, we don't need to have, you don't know, you don't have to go crazy. So you're going to go like banana, 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 banana. And then on this side, banana, 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 banana. And we're gonna give it a couple coconuts. I love coconut. There's a coconut and there's a coconut. Wherever you can fit them on your palm tree. If your palms all meet real close together, and you need to put the two coconuts at the bottom, that works too. Okay, now we're going to put the line of shrubs, like beautiful bushes, nice you know, shrubs that you find in the landscaping, uh, maybe in Florida. So we're gonna go bump, 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 bump. We don't want them to be perfect and even. We want it to be a little bit curvy. There we have our line of shrubs. And then we're gonna put a nice little sun. Gotta have sun in a beach scene. And I don't like to close my circle for my sun for some reason. If you wanna close your circle, you can. I kinda of like going like this so it doesn't quite close. And then when I put the, ray, the rays coming out from the sun, I like to go long ray, short ray, long ray, short ray. Something like that. Kind of abstract and fun. Now some details. Okay, we're going to go over to the palm tree. And here's what we're going to do with the palm tree. I'm going to go like this on each palm. V. V. I'm going to make my V go in the direction of that palm leaf. See that? Almost as if it's arrows saying, go back to the tree. You know, follow this arrow back to the tree. Maybe it's easier to do it that way, to start at the end and go back to the tree. Go back to the tree. And there we have some texture, some detail, some line detail on the palm leaves. A couple little one, two, three, four on each coconut. One, two, three, four. You know how coconuts are hairy. They're like all, all that um, coarse coconut hair on the outside. And now I'm putting X's. 
down the trunk. So it looks like that wrapped, fun bark that coconuts have. They're like, all, or coconut trees, palm trees have. It's all wrapped. There's detail for our palm tree. For our shrubs, the way they have this fun, bumpy top, I'm going to add some more fun, bumpy lines here and there. You don't have to do a ton. It's amazing how just a little bit goes a long way. I think that's enough. Now, this can take a while. We're going to put little dots where the sand is. Okay. Dot, 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 dot. Can you see? Dot, 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 dot. I think this really uh, is worth the effort because I think it really makes us understand this is sand. It's not a sidewalk uh, or anything else. It's clearly a sand because of all the little dots. And when I colored it, I used brown crayon and did the same thing. Dump, dump, dump. There we go. And in the water, you could add just a few water lines. Don't get too carried away. You don't need to like loop, loop, like she's going to get washed away by waves. You know, just a few to show that it's nice, calm water, but it is the ocean. Flamingos don't hang out in lakes and the water is always moving. So it does help to have a little bit of these little ripply waves. Now you can color this however you choose. And I noticed just now I didn't put watermarks in my water, so I'm going to do it now. Oop, I forgot one more thing on this part. One more detail and you're done drawing and you can color or paint. The tip of her beak is black, right? So let's just go ahead and color it black. Now it actually looks nice in black and white, but if you choose to color it, I used crayon. I'm going to go ahead and put those water lines in now. You can always add marker details after crayon too. They add to it. I'm glad I remembered and caught that while I was teaching you because I like that look a lot. Whenever I colored this, I put white crayon down and then I blended pink crayon because flamingos aren't solid pink. They're white and then they have like a dark intense reddish pink going on. So what I did is I colored it white and then I blended the pink crayon on top to create that very, very light uh, pink and it almost layered feathers look because it's not a solid pink. I painted her or I, I colored her legs pink. For the sand, I went over with white and then I dotted it all over the place with brown the way I did with the black crayon or the black marker. I did it with brown crayon. So there's both brown and black speckles with my white sand. So it's a coat of white and then dotted it with brown. I used a curly Q stroke with my crayon to further reinforce these curly Q marks that let us know it's a shrub. I went over my marker lines with brown crayon and then colored this brown. And the sky, I made my sun yellow and then I put pink around it and then a beautiful blue sky. And if you paint, if you choose to paint your flamingo, here's a little trick with sunsets. I seem to teach a lot of sunsets. And I often hear young artists become very frustrated because they're trying to paint a sunset. And when the sun meets the blue sky, they get green. And you almost never see green in a sunset. So it always gets them so frustrated. So here's a little trick. If you are going to be a beginner sunset painter, here is a really cool trick. 
put a ring of pink around your yellow sun. It is a foolproof barrier. If the pink paint and yellow paint mix, you get a little bit of an orange. If the pink paint and the blue paint mix, you get a little bit of a purple. And those are both colors you see in a sunset, so it's very pretty, foolproof. So there's a little trick for you. So you can also paint this beautiful flamingo. Either way, I think she's a great drawing. I hope you like drawing her with me today. And I hope I see you again and that you have a really great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.